When we received the new 10 series laptops for review, we noticed that they were anything but instant, at least these MSI units we got. And that's because when we opened the system tray, we were fronted with this monstrosity on the screen now. Even with an SSD, opening Windows Explorer took one full second minimally, and Norton is there. About three different control panels are there because you need different interfaces to get to the same place and all manner of other bloatware. Today we're showing you just how profoundly a system's FPS is dragged down by bloatware extra software you don't want, but before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC with a full tempered glass side window, LED lights in the fans and underglow, and is basically a modified S340. These are two systems we're using to demonstrate the problem. One is an MSI GE62 VR Apache Pro. This is a brand new system from the factory and clearly demonstrates that the sluggish input is not a hardware issue. The GE62 VR has a GTX 1060 full desktop GPU installed, an i7-6700HQ CPU that boosts to 3.5 gigahertz, 256GB M.2 SSD, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 and cost $1,700. So clearly it should not be a hardware problem. It should not be slow out of the box. The other system is from last generation and uses a 970M mobile GPU with an i7 CPU and it is also an MSI GE series laptop. The software pre-installed and launching on boot includes Norton Antivirus, Killer Networking, Steel Series Keyboard Management, Touchpad Management, Warranty Registration Pop-Ups that are incessant, MSI Control Panel, Intel software, another MSI software solution, Microsoft OneDrive, and a couple of other things. Norton is the biggest offender in terms of active processor utilization, just during file transfers alone. Moving games, for example, from our internal server to the laptop, we saw CPU utilization spike to 100% at times. CPU usage often hit 30% sporadically during use, just normal use often when Norton decided to scan something. And this is an important topic, although a lot of viewers of this channel are enthusiasts of some kind, you likely have a good idea of how to optimize one of these things out of the box, i.e. uninstall everything. Not everyone who's buying these laptops will know that, and they might see it as the brand is bad, the hardware is bad, Windows is bad, something like that, when in reality it's just filled with trash from the get-go. Let's look at the impact of this messy OS on gaming performance, full test methodology, and the article can be found in the link in the description below. Make sure you click that to read more on this issue. The hypothesis here is that more CPU-bound games will exhibit a bigger performance swing, as the bloatware is taxing the CPU sporadically during uptime. Starting us off, the GE62 VR with a GTX 1060 pushes these numbers for GTA 5 at 1080p with our very high and ultra settings configured. Without bloatware, we're running 109 FPS average, 78 1% lows, and 70 0.1% lows. The article, by the way, explains these numbers if you don't know what they mean, but the short of it is that they are the slowest groupings of frames rather than a minimum measured by looking at frame times. With bloatware, those numbers fall to 90 FPS average or in the 50s for 0.1% low FPS. Just for the average alone, that's a change of 20.7% by disabling all the pre-installed software that comes with the laptop and uninstalling Norton. For higher resolution play, that's a game changer because it could be the difference between 60 FPS plus or not. And the lows are hugely important too because we will start seeing visible stuttering with other games. And let's just take a look at one of those now. Here's Metro Last Light, a CPU-intensive game at 1080p with very high quality and high tessellation. The GTX 1060 rig runs at 75.7 FPS average without bloatware, 54.7 FPS 1% low, and 51 FPS 0.1% lows. Good numbers across the board. With a system running its factory default, including the software, we're seeing a 59 FPS average and less than half the 0.1% low values. This is a huge hit to performance and will present itself as staggered FPS output in gameplay. There's a major disparity too in frame time pacing and more suitably, this also means that the low metrics would be totally incompatible with fluid VR play without dynamic quality adjustments in the face of MSI's VR badge on the system. Looking at the 970M unit last generation, we're seeing an output of 40.7 FPS average with 30 FPS 1% lows and 24 0.1% lows with no bloatware at all. Looking at its performance from the factory, again with all of the software, those numbers are almost halved across the board. There's nearly a 2x gain in performance just by removing clutter, and that's particularly noticeable with the lows, 13.7 FPS 0.1% metrics, 
means visible stutter and chop in frame rate output, which creates a jarring experience. Here's Shadow of Mordor on the 970M unit at 1080p with ultra graphics. We're seeing a marginal improvement from 44 FPS to 49.3 FPS average, or approximately 12%, and that is again caused by the software pre-installed. Overwatch is the only game we tested where no serious improvement was shown, and that's a result of the game being minimally demanding for this type of hardware, and it's also bumping into GPU limits before CPU limits. The GE62 VR1060 unit is producing a frame rate of 147.7 FPS average with both the clean and bloated systems, but we see a marked improvement in the 0.1% and 1% low metrics with the cleaned out unit. The same is true for the 970M where performance is most different at the low values. This coincides with our findings that the CPU chokes almost randomly on Norton and other background processes. The takeaway here is not that these systems are bad. The hardware is actually pretty good when we look especially at the 1060's performance with no software installed or active. And it's really just unfortunate for MSI because out of box, the unit to a consumer will look worse than it's actually capable of performing. If you uninstall or disable a lot of the stuff that's unnecessary, it doesn't have to be all of it. You can leave the SteelSeries keyboard, stuff like that. But Norton in particular, get rid of that. The MSI control panel is certainly not needed. You can get rid of that. The system will perform anywhere from 12% at the low end to 20 plus percent better in frame rate, with the exception being games like Overwatch, which are more bound by GPU and stuff like that instead. And even in those instances, you see improvement in the low metrics, which will reduce stutter because the CPU is just randomly spiking to 30% plus load for the bloatware applications, not for the actual game itself. So if MSI would kind of move away from this, it will improve two things. One is the user experience out of box, which of course we think is the most important. And two, from maybe MSI's business perspective, it will improve the benchmark numbers when reviewers look at these units. And from a competitive standpoint, that's something they should care about, even though it's maybe not something that consumers care about a lot, it is a driving argument for making a business decision to potentially ax some of the software that's pre-installed. One thing we talk about with system integrators like CyberPower, Origin, and iBuyPower is that they all have options to ship the unit with no bloatware at all. This is the correct approach and should be adopted by MSI, and besides, MSI units are often sold as rebranded SI units anyway. If you were to buy one of these from MSI and then the same unit again from an SI who opts out of bloatware, you'd actually see better performance out of box with the SI unit. And MSI is not the only offender either. Gigabyte ships their laptops, the new 10 series laptops, with XSplit pre-installed and their own control panel software, which they call Smart Dashboard. And then there's the Asus laptops, which include a Sonic Sound suite, that's for sound control, also unnecessary, and XSplit an ROG control center, or whatever they call it these days. ROG Gaming Center, I believe, is what they call it now. Another useless control panel that controls all the same things you can do through Windows or better applications that are less load intensive on the CPU for no reason whatsoever. So these are not issues that are strictly relegated to these MSI units. And I guess the takeaway here is when you buy a laptop, this isn't obviously something you can just DIY like a desktop. When you go buy a laptop, Go through the software that's on it and get rid of it if you can do without that software. Obviously, some things you would want to keep, like the touchpad management, pretty important, does things that you can't really do just from Windows sometimes anyway. You can keep the SteelSeries stuff for the RGB keyboard, but Norton, if you can get rid of it, I, I'm sorry, Norton, I don't like your product. If you can get rid of it, do so. Uh, the control panels, like the ROG one, the MSI one, the Gigabyte, they all have a control panel, get rid of that. And uh, of course, there's other things like OneDrive. If you're not going to use it, just dump it. If you're going to use it, whatever, no big deal. So that's kind of the takeaway. The only thing here we haven't really discussed is that some of this may not be quite as easy to resolve for the manufacturers as just removing whatever the software is because they likely have partnerships in place. There's a good chance that there's some kind of financial partnership between Norton and MSI. One of them, if not, getting money, they're definitely doing some kind of exposure trade. Uh, so partnerships are things we're obviously not including here. That could impact what shows up this year versus maybe next year if they make changes based on testing. Uh, but that's kind of the only one outlier that we can't really look at too closely. So that is it for this video. Patreon link in the post roll video if you want to help us out directly with this type of research. As always, subscribe for more content. Comment below. I'll see you all next time.